Matthew puts together two events that happened the week before Jesus was crucified, and he puts them side by side in order for us to focus on one very important question. What is Jesus worth? There in Matthew chapter 26, beginning in verse 6, we find these words. Now when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Can you imagine being in that room when that woman came and did that? When she came and took a very expensive, we have no idea exactly the, the value of it, uh, but Matthew just records for us, it is a very expensive uh, bottle of ointment that she just covers Jesus in. The smell would have permeated the entire room. The disciples, all they could look at is, man, we could have sold that. We could have taken care of so many poor people. We could have done all of these wonderful things, but instead she just poured it all out right now for no apparent reason. And instead of Jesus joining with the disciples and going, man, there are so many hungry that could have eaten, he acknowledges one very real instance. The poor will always be here. If you feed them today, they'll be hungry tomorrow. Now, he's not telling them not to take care of the poor. We'll talk about that in just a second. But what he is trying to get them to realize is to look beyond the poor for a moment, to just ask, is Jesus worth this great extravagant offering? What do you believe Jesus is worth? Matthew combines it with what Judas felt about this. He goes on in the very next verse and says, Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he sought an opportunity to betray him. You see, Judas looked at Jesus and said, What can I get for Jesus? What's in it for me? This woman saw Jesus and said, what do I have to give for him? Which question tends to permeate your thought? Is it more about what can Jesus do for me? Can he forgive my sins and can he give me a better house? Can he make me healthy? Can he make me strong? Can he give me peace? Can he give me joy? Can he give me all of these things? Is that what your prayer life often sounds like? Or does your prayer life sound more like, Jesus, what can I do to serve you? How can I be of service to you? What do I have that I can give to you? Now, I want to be careful here. I don't want people hearing this and saying, well, here's another pastor that's trying to get things for the church because that's the complete opposite of what I'm trying to do. One way of giving to Jesus may be to give more to the church. It, it may be, but that is not the only way that we can give to Jesus today. It's not the only way that we can show to Jesus what we honestly believe he is worth. You know, what one way that we can give to Jesus is by giving to the poor. It is by donating to charities or to ministries that reach out to those who are hungry or sick or homeless. This is an important thing for believers to be doing because Jesus himself said, as much as we do it unto the least of these, we are doing it also to him. That is one way that we can give. Another way might be giving the best to the church, even if it's something that the church doesn't particularly need, but it can be something that can make the, the facilities more beautiful or, or worship more uh, meaningful. Or even if it's just a gift that your heart is just pounding, I want to give this to the Lord. That is one way that you can do it. Another way is by buying groceries for a struggling neighbor and not just giving them the leftovers, Maybe spending as much on your neighbor as you spent on yourself, or let's go crazy, what if you even spent more on your neighbor's groceries than you spent on your own? You see, doing these acts of generosity to those who are around us are one way that we can show Jesus what he's worth. 
that we give these gifts not in the name of ourselves that lift ourselves up, that make our neighbors grateful to us, but maybe they could even be given anonymously with a note on that that just says, Jesus loves you and so do I. What is Jesus worth? Is he worth your time and meditation on just thinking about his value? Is Jesus worth your finances being given in places that you do not typically give your finances? Is he worth your talents that you would give of your skills and abilities and ways of serving him by loving your neighbor as much as you love yourselves? As you prepare for Easter, I ask you to just take some time and ask yourself, what is Jesus worth? Am I trying to give to him or am I just waiting for him to give to me? Let's be like that lady. Let's pour extravagant gifts upon Jesus and love those around us. This is what Christ would have us to do.